I wanted to play this quick little clip of something that you said last year before the election. Um, so why don't we why don't we play that clip and then we'll we'll be right back. The reality, I think, is that Trump would simply hand over the keys to the ki kingdom to the deep state and say, do whatever you want. I don't want to know about it. Just make sure that you don't get caught. Right. <laughs> like, and, and frankly, even if they did get caught and there was another major scandal like the torture scandal during the Bush administration, I don't think he gives a shit. He's totally immune to criticism. So before we get into the like substance of that quote, one thing that it made me think of is like this idea First of all, like credit to you, because you totally called this and it really seems like that's what's happening. But because we're talking about healthcare, I just want to talk about this for a second. Like my impression has really been that Trump did not care about like what the policy was. He just wanted to win. Like, is that your impression? Yes, definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> but also, I mean, in addition to that, though, you know, he like. Okay, let me back up for a second. So I read this really interesting piece, um, an interview actually it was with Masha Gessen in Politico. And as you may know, Masha Gessen is a Russian dissident journalist who actually had to leave Russia because she was facing homophobic uh, threats to her and her family, um, in large part because of Vladimir Putin's, you know, right wing government and, you know, the rising fascist uh, power structure there. So anyway, she has been a really interesting commentator on all of this Russia Trump stuff. And she's been mm -hmm. a voice of reason, actually, especially for someone who hates Putin as much as she does. Um, she has, you know, called into question what she calls conspiracy theories about, um, the Russia Trump connection and things like that. And that's just the general democratic hysteria and the, you know, the pointing to Russia instead of actually pointing to Trump and, you know, examining Trump's positions and Trump's statements and the people that Trump has put in government and the fact that they're all liars and thieves and et cetera, et cetera. She says, you know, I'm not sure exactly why the Democrats are focusing so much on Russia when what we have in front of us is demonstrably horrific. So maybe we should talk about that. Um, she also thinks it's bad politics. Regardless, she said something really interesting in this interview with Politico where she said um, she basically said that her heuristic is essentially that the unimaginable will happen. And she was referring, of course, to Trump's election. And I thought that was really funny because my heuristic, I guess, is that the worst thing will happen. And I know that's terrible, but <laughs> I really, that it really is true. And so, you know, during the campaign, when people like Michael Tracy and were saying things like, well, Clinton is a warmonger, which is a demonstrated fact. Um, and Trump is sort of an open book. Um, we don't know, or rather, you know, a closed book. We don't know what kinds of policies he would actually pursue, but he's made noises that sound isolationist, you know, this America first kind of stuff. And I just looked at all of that and thought that is completely fucking facile. There's no way that that's true. Um, and it's true. It, you know, maybe I thought that in part because my heuristic is that the worst thing will happen, but I think it's also, it was, it was obvious, it was obvious to me too, because Trump is so clearly disinterested in information and yep. in governing, right? Yep. And whereas Obama, yep. you know, I, I had a lot of criticisms of the Obama administration's foreign policy. I had a lot of criticisms of Hillary Clinton's foreign policy. But what you could not say about Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama is that they were not immersed in the details of what they were doing. They, these are people who are clearly invested in the details of the policies that they are uh, pursuing, arguing for, and implementing. And it was just patently clear to me two things about Trump that distinguish them from Clinton and Obama. One is that Trump does not know how to read and is completely disinterested in learning any information about the world or how the U.S. government works. And two, that he's really fucking easy to manipulate, right? Yeah. Um, because yeah. he's so stupid and, you know, he's such an ignoramus and he, all he cares about is personal flattery. You know, he's just like a pathetic narcissist. So thinking about Trump, uh, j let's even just say for a moment that he were an American first, an America first isolationist, that he actually really believed that it doesn't fucking matter because he doesn't understand anything and he's super easy to manipulate. So even if that were true, even if it were true that he really didn't want the U S engaged in wars abroad, 
it wouldn't matter because the CIA and the Pentagon are full of really smart people who make it their job to try to convince and manipulate presidents to do what they want to do, um, which is frankly, you know, kill people abroad and do a lot of war. So it just strikes, it struck me as so foolish to imagine that Trump would be able to, um, even enact that sort of isolationist policy. Um, and that is of course accepting it the premise that that's really what he believed and that it wasn't simply another one of his lies. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, now we're seeing obviously that that was total bullshit. You know, he's completely disinterested in, uh, in peace or anything resembling peace. Um, you know, there's a New York times story from, uh, last week that says that, uh, as many as 200 people were killed in a, an airstrike that, um, is believed to be a U.S. airstrike, civilians, I should say, in, um, Iraq. And, you know, there's, there's this remarkable quote in the New York Times story. It says, or rather, it's not a quote. This is the story itself. It says, quote, some American military officials had also chafed at what they viewed as long and onerous White House procedures for approving strikes under the Obama administration. Mr. Trump has indicated that he is more inclined to delegate authority for launching strikes to the Pentagon and commanders in the field. End quote. This is so fucking predictable that Trump is not interested. He does not want to know. He says to these, you know, impressive generals in their fancy uniforms with a bunch of buttons and shit on them. He's totally impressed by things like that. And he loves that sort of authority. You know, he worships it. He's a small man with a small brain who has a small sense of you know, self-esteem and probably looks at those guys and thinks, wow, you know, they're really strong. You know, he's obsessed with that word strength. You know, those, those are strong guys. I'm going to do what they say. Right. Like I want them to like, yeah. me. you know, they're, they're cool. So I'll just do whatever they want basically. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Um, unfortunately it was predictable and some people couldn't see it. Well, and I saw a report last week that was saying that Trump gave the authority to the CIA to do drone strikes which is like way more authority just handed over than and like Obama is not somebody who seemed like he was like not you know opposed to drone strikes he, he used them in, to horrible ends but like Trump is just like okay CIA yeah you want to do a drone strike do a drone strike like it's it's absurdly right which you know is going to uh, have i think yeah I think it's going to have some uh, maybe unintended consequences again, because Trump does not understand what he's doing. Right. Um, he of course has, he doesn't understand that the CIA and the department of defense have long had a turf war over the drone program. Um, he, he probably doesn't know any of that history or care to know it. Um, and so, you know, he sort of just flies off the handle. It's like, yeah, you're, you, you know, it's, it's sort of like the fa- the way in which he watches Fox News and then makes these insane policy pronouncements on Twitter <laughs> about what Sean Hannity just said. Like the last person who speaks to him, who seems authoritative um, and mm-hmm. is a man, most likely, unless you're <laughs> Kell- Kellyanne Conway, is someone who um, is going to win the moment, at least. Right. Um, and it's not necessarily winning the day because Trump can, you know, change his opinion in five minutes if someone else who has like a nicer suit and looks taller and stronger comes in five minutes later and says something more <laughs> confidently to him, he may very well change his mind. Um, but you know, I, so yeah, it's a fucking colossal disaster and you know, potentially 200 Iraqis are dead as a result of his complete disinterest in, um, having any meaningful oversight or engagement in what the U S military is doing abroad. So I don't want to make it sound like uh, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton had good foreign policy. That is not the argument that I am making. I disagreed with their foreign policy almost all the time. But it was clear that they were engaged decision makers who actually knew what the fuck they were doing, even if they were making bad decisions. Um, Trump is disinterested in governing, period. And so, you know, the notion that he would be involved yeah. in, in any real sense in terms of um, implementing strict rules to prevent c- civilian casualties or doing, frankly, anything that military and CIA leaders do not want to do is fucking ludicrous.